Governments may be legislating around climate change while the private sector slowly engages with sustainable development goals, but there's still a space for the citizens of the world to play their part and bring their investment power to bear. EcoWatt is an investment platform that makes it easier for individuals and institutions to green up their portfolios, particularly in renewable energy and social impact projects. I'm Andrew Wilson and I'm in Davos to talk to Marketing Director Lauren Howarth about getting involved. Okay, Lauren, thanks for joining us. Good to talk to you. Uh, first of all, EcoWatt, well, your literature talks about two main areas of investment. Why don't we start with those? What are those two different priorities you have? Sure, thank you for having me. EcoWatt is essentially a renewable energy company, and we have two distinct investment portfolios and some pretty interesting ways to get involved in them. Our first portfolio is a green asset portfolio, and that's where EcoWatt will either build new renewable power stations or we will acquire operating ones. We currently have a solar power station in Hungary that's about to go live, and we've got a couple of others, including solar, renewable, uh, wind, and geothermal uh, in our pipeline, and we've got just over about 1,800 megawatts. So that makes you the fund and the project? Absolutely, so we're the asset operator, which becomes quite powerful in terms of investments. And um, the second portfolio is a social impact portfolio. Um, this is where we are predominantly funding land-based projects that produce carbon credits. So types of things like reforestation. We are looking to expand the portfolio to include ocean-based, so coral reef rejuvenation and mangrove rejuvenation. And key to that is that we take 25% of net revenue from our green asset portfolio and we put it into funding the social impact portfolio. That's how we currently operate, but we are looking to create access to investing directly into the social impact portfolio soon. Do you get a sense that it's moving quite fast? Enormously fast. It's very exciting. And I think it's led predominantly by legislation, um, firstly, and secondly, by the technology that's advancing. Who are your investors? We've got a lot of institutional investors and some key banks at the moment. So we're on board and they are a priority for us. But I think there is a lot to be said about democratizing access to investments like this. So we are looking to expand it to retail investors. The other thing that retail investors are nervous about, of course, uh, is the risk they perceive a niche market, but also, of course, they're concerned they won't get the same sort of growth as the big funds going into traditional investments would get. When it comes to renewable energy, we reckon it's a safe haven investment that will continue to be for 10 to 20 years. Um, and simply because you are investing in something that takes a long period of time to build and to maintain, and the returns will take a certain amount of time as well. So you're not looking at spectacular returns, but you are looking at something that offers you a high level of security, which is really worthwhile in a diversified portfolio. And speaking of diversified portfolios, your staff must be pretty diverse as well at EcoWatt because you've got all these different niche areas to look into, to understand, to advise upon, get involved in. What's it like working at EcoWatt? What's the team like? It's wonderfully diversified, as it should be. So we've got a talent that's been largely in renewable energy for at least 30 years. Some of our team has been in banking and finance in various different uh, private equity. Um, in fact, our chief investment officer is one that is very ardently looking at all the projects that we're bringing in and making sure they're investment ready. And we also use third party validators for specifically the social impact projects, because those need to have very special scrutiny to make sure that the carbon credits are appropriate. And is the ethos kept alive? Is it consistent within the staff at EcoWatt? This might sound corny, but we genuinely believe that innovative investment will save the world. So without question, everybody who's involved in this company, we want to make a difference. We want everybody to get involved in projects that will ultimately contribute towards saving the planet. Um, be a benefit to the community around those and get a decent return as well. A lot of investors who are getting involved in green funds around the world are starting to look for different instruments and see what works and so on. And I gather blockchain is something that's been considered by a lot of people. Tell me a bit about that. This is where it gets really exciting. So, um, I mean, we can address the fact that blockchain, uh, there's a lot of fear around it because it's closely tied to cryptocurrency. But it should be said that Cryptocurrency is a feature that operates on the blockchain. Blockchain is so much more powerful than that, and the applications are interesting for investors. So a couple of things are important about this. Um, blockchain offers 
transparency and traceability unlike any other technology has currently offered. And that becomes key in investing. Um, and what we're currently looking at is not only is it traceable, untrackable and immutable, which means no one can go back and change and rewrite history. Aside from that, we've got the ability to operate a token in a closed system, so not an exchange traded token, operate a token in a closed system where you can go up to multiple decimal points. So we can talk up to eight or even 13 decimal points. Now what that actually means is it enables fractionalized investment. And this is where we get retail investors involved because now people can get involved in funding a renewable power station with a micro share rather than having only one or two institutional investors. Well, that sounds absolutely fine for the retail market in that case. Exhilarating because we're now democratizing access. Looking at the, still looking at the different sort of end, end, end products, where are your carbon markets offsets? So the carbon markets at the moment are large and complicated. Um, we've got multiple different types of carbon credits with lots of different price points, and all of them are essentially doing the same thing, which is offsetting a ton of carbon dioxide. So um, it's an interesting space, and we're watching the legislation around the world starting to incentivize big institutions to offset their emissions. But by no means are carbon offsets the solution. They are part of the solution. It's an interim step. You know, for a large uh, institution that needs to change its operations, we know it is extremely expensive and time consuming. So whilst they're changing and, you know, trying to change the direction of the Titanic, there are interim solutions to be done to offset the fact that they don't have to pay major fines. And that's where the carbon credits come in. And then what we're starting to see is that there's a lot of scrutiny around the carbon credit market itself because you've got different types of carbon credits and now we need to see some standardization come into place. Um, and there's some key factors that they're looking at to do that. So we're really hopeful that um, the carbon markets will start to standardize and get a bit more simplified. I mean, I was wondering, you know, are investors getting more kind of comfortable with the direction of travel rather than just seizing on carbon offsets as a way of cleaning up their act, if you like, for any scrutiny, but actually seeing it as a way of step in a certain direction? Yeah, I think we are starting to see that. Yeah. And the big institutions, partnerships, I mean, you're pretty big by yourselves, but there's, a, there's plenty of room for collaboration, I imagine. Definitely. I mean, when we're talking about uh, green bonds that are millions or if not hundreds of millions of dollars, we are looking for partners that they have the same values and they fundamentally understand the challenges that renewable energy uh, projects and social impact projects face. I mean, if you're looking at, uh, if you're looking at what the institutions can do, what partnerships can do, there must be different kinds of partnerships out there because you've got the, you've got the, 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 uh, the, uh, the energy direction and the social impact direction. All that might bring different organisations into your view and perhaps there's possibilities to become partners with. Is that, is that how it works? Definitely. And what's becoming exciting about this is some institutions are more focused on renewable energy. Some institutions are focused on ocean cleanups. So we can have different levels of institution and partnerships for different um, focuses. Looking ahead at the investment market, are you personally in the place and the space you want to be right now? Do you feel you're on that kind of next five, ten year plan? Are you optimistic about where it's going and where you're going with it? Definitely. I think if people are playing the short term game and they're looking at the equities market at the moment, they might be a little afraid. But we don't play that game. We are in it for the long haul. So when you are looking at diversifying a portfolio, which we are looking at, and something that has perhaps not spectacular returns, but something more stable over the long term, that's where we've, we're playing. And it's a worthwhile addition to a diversified portfolio. And do you think you're setting a trend? Do you think you're going to be f followed by other like-minded organizations? If they're smart, they will. Great. Lauren, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thanks for having me.